I'm a driver's car guy. I like quick, nimble, lightweight things as a rule. But every once in a while, even I have a soft spot for a big, bad SUV. The recently redesigned Nissan Armada fits that big and bad description to a T. But the size and in-your-face styling are just the entree to this segment's dark horse. How does it look? The folks that spec'd this white over black wheels version of the Armada were being clever. The combo helps to visually minimize the scale of this beast. But the truth is that the high riding, long, wide, three row SUV takes up just as much space as your standard Tahoe or Expedition. How's the storage? For such a big vehicle, the Armada's rear cargo area is surprisingly petite. You can put a row of grocery bags back here, but not a whole lot more than that. So if you want to haul the big stuff, you're going to have to fold a seat or two, and that's going to take a while. It might not be up to minivan standards in terms of cup holders, but everyone from the driver to the third row is pretty well taken care of here. There's a really deep well for a central storage up front and a second row compartment that's plenty versatile, among many other stash spaces throughout. Is it roomy? There's a lot of legroom and loads of headroom for the driver and front passenger. The second row fares nearly as well, and the third row is plenty usable, even if it is just slightly less comfortable for adults than in the other chairs. The crew should be more than happy to climb inside on a regular basis. How does the interior feel? Now, while this Armada might not be quite so posh as its Infinity counterpart, the wood trim and the leather accents get you just about 80% of the way to a luxury vehicle. Still, the hard steering wheel plastics do call it out as a mainstream vehicle. Is it well equipped? Leather, powered everything, and rear seat entertainment could have sold this as a proper luxury vehicle just a few years back. As it stands, there's more than enough equipment to keep most families, including the parents, happy about driving. How's the infotainment system? This is where the Armada really shows its age. Yes, there's a touchscreen and basically functional software, but it doesn't have normal things like pinch to zoom or even Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which are becoming expected in all segments. Is it a good daily driver? So the Armada has the same problems as a daily driver that any SUV this size would have. It's really big. It's a little bit hard to find a parking space for it. Certainly if you're in the city, it's not the most wieldy vehicle that you could have. But beyond that, it's pretty great. The suspension is compliant. The engine is really powerful, which makes freeway stuff merging and passing really easy. And it's reasonably quiet at speed. And of course, the stuff that you would buy something this size for as a daily driver is all there too. So there's a roomy uh, compartment for the second row and third row passengers. There's plenty of space that's configurable for all your stuff. And it'll haul 8,500 pounds, which isn't at the top of any trailering ability, but it'll certainly tow a lot of boats, uh, recreational vehicles, or even a race car trailer or two. Not two. Is it fun to drive? Again, sort of the same problem here. Uh, no SUV this huge is really fun to drive unless you're climbing something or chugging through some mud, I guess. But I will say that especially with the 5.6 liter V8 in here, uh, it's, it's okay. The powertrain is pretty good. I mean, floor it and you're gonna feel all of the 390 horsepower and 394 pound feet of torque. It certainly gets this thing going with uh, a good deal of quickness. Ah. 
<laughs> but if you try and go around a corner, it's just a bad idea. It, there's a lot of body roll. When you brake hard, there's a lot of uh, dive and certainly a lot of squat when you step on it too. So nothing unusual for the segment, but does it stand apart as a particularly fun three row? No. How's the fuel economy? As much as I love this 5.6 liter V8, its consumption ratings call it out as slightly behind the times. The four-wheel drive Nissan does 18 miles per gallon on the highway and 12 in the city, both worse numbers than competitors from Ford and Chevy. How much is it? A base Armada starts at about $45,000, and the Platinum trim at roughly $58,000. Our loaded up tester breaks the $61,000 mark, those numbers undercut the Chevy Suburban by a few grand, but they're largely in line with the competitive set. Still, I think 60 grand buys you nearly as much luxury and function as in the premium Infiniti QX80. What are the negatives? Even inside of the full-size SUV segment, this is a thirsty vehicle. Don't expect to get off light when it comes time to pay the gas bill. It also has slightly weird styling and the infotainment is more than slightly behind the times. Overall, you can see why General Motors has dominated this segment for such a long time. Who should buy it? Take a look at the Armada if you want a big, three-row, feature-rich SUV at somewhat of a bargain price. It's tough, it'll haul your boat and your kids, and it'll stand out from the crowd, for better or for worse. Oh, hey there. Were you checking out my Lotus Ringer sweatshirt? Of course you were, it's pretty damn cool. If you'd like to get one like it for yourself, check out motorstore.com. We are clothing some of the most fashionable dads in the world this fall, and you can be one of them.